Dr. Bill Adams here, and this is No Spin Live, episode 120. And we are talking about an Atlantic monthly article where America is about to go Botox wild. The post-pandemic beauty boom is about to start, and we've got three incredible experts to tell us about this. Dr. Jason Posner from Boca Raton, Florida, Dr. Armando Soto from Orlando, Florida, and Dr. Duncan Hughes from Raleigh, North Carolina. How's it going, guys? Going well. Going well. Hey, Bill. Great. Good to be here, Bill. Excellent. Well, Jason, you you actually sent me this article, so why don't you lead it off? What 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 do you think about this, and and what what insights do you have? You know, you know, it's interesting. So as we've talked about on No Spin and in studio in the past, everyone's stuck home. You know, they're stuck home. They're not traveling. They're on these stupid Zoom calls day in and day out. So they had nothing better to do but critique their faces and their bodies. So we, we've had a huge uptick in surgery since we had reopened after the pandemic last year. And, and plastic surgeons across the country have really been experiencing this. So then you get some of the popular media picking up on this. And it's not just Botox. It's basically across the board. We're all very busy. And hopefully it'll stay for a while. You know, I, I think it'll persist until next summer. And 2022 summer is going to be like a dead zone when everyone kind of resumes travel but I think we're, we're all busy I mean I did a ton of Botox today's my clinic day um, I did a ton of Botox and then fillers as well as consults I mean we're we're busy you know I, I, I'm sure you guys are too it's nice to hear from different areas of the country and it's across the board from from little stuff to big stuff yeah I mean Armando it's just not it's not just Botox there's a lot of things that are out there now what Absolutely. are you seeing? What do you think? Lots of interest in everything head to toe. You know, it's it's uh, it's interesting to me how much interest we're seeing in lip plumping. You know, everybody's walking around with a mask on. But I guess when you take the mask off, people are still interested in in lip volumization. Uh, lots of laser treatments, but body work. You know, people are starting to look forward to the day that they're not having to hole up at home and actually get to wear something that makes them feel like they look good. And Duncan, so what do you what do you what do you think the hottest things out there now? What do, what has been what's been the biggest booms that you're seeing of people wanting to do? Well, from a surgical perspective, people have the downtime. Um, you know, one of the things that I have found is a game changer now is the concept of, uh, Doc, what's my downtime from this surgery? And if you're working from home your downtime is 48 hours, right? I mean, the next day they're on their phone, they're answering emails, they're doing all that sort of stuff. So if they can function um, within 72 to 96 hours, I mean, that totally is a game changer for the, the, the pros versus cons of do I commit now or do I wait for, you know, a break or, or something like that. So I think that's been the biggest, biggest difference. So <clears throat> as far as what's popular, it's pretty much everything, you know, from a surgical side, which we all do. Um, you know, I think the fact that people are still working, so they still have disposable income, they're not traveling, they're not going to restaurants as much. Um, but that downtime factor, I think, is the probably the biggest game changer, in my opinion. Yeah, Jason, uh, you you really introduced me to the greatness of Cyton and some of the things they have, like Hero. You know, that that's just been an incredible addition for somebody that hasn't really done a lot of non-surgical in their career, but it's been fantastic in terms of some of that new technology, minimal minimal recovery, but really great reproducible, predictable results. So it's interesting for the consumer looking at all of these non-surgical things, it gets confusing because if you Google something, you don't know if it's outdated or not. You know, you might pick up something from 2005 versus 2021, and you may think, well, I want this. So I talk to the patients, I say, look, don't talk about devices. Talk about what, the, let's figure out what the problem is. And then we'll figure out the device to use. Many times what I'll tell the consumer is what you're talking about is iPhone 5. I'm talking iPhone 12. Technology has changed and people understand that. They really do understand that technology changed and we've caught, we've kept up. Yeah. Everyone on this call is a Cyton owner. I think they make among the best, you know, the best devices on the planet. Yeah. You do have to put it in those terms for patients sometimes, though, because they don't realize that what somebody, you know, on the other side of town is offering them is a laser from 2000 or something. And there are significant differences in, in the outcome they can expect and also the recovery complications. Everything's a lot different. So the technology has moved along. And as you were saying, Bill, I think that it's made a huge difference, um, you know, and it's going to make an even bigger difference going forward when people have to go back to work and we're actually getting out again. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Duncan, uh, 
So what, what, what's the outlook do you predict uh, in this? You know, they're saying this is post pandemic beauty boom that the yeah, way the, the article is written, it's going to go on for some time. What do you, what do you think? The Zoom boom. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I agree with Jason. I think at least through next summer, uh, I think we're going to be very busy, <clears throat> both with surgical and non-surgical modalities. You know, the article that you're referring to in The Atlantic, uh, that the concept that people feel badly about themselves in the sense that they haven't been able to take care of themselves as well because they're not seeing interacting with human beings as much. So they haven't really been doing the things that they used to do, whether that's hair or nails or facials or Botox or surgery. And now that the prospect of things opening up and the fact that they have to actually now go face to face, they're excited about that, but they're also scared about it. Um, I thought one of the the best lines from that argu uh, article was uh, the three factors that are driving what we're talking about are a combination of boredom, anxiety and hope. And I love that. I thought it was a great combination of of sentiments, and we all feel those. And particularly the people, you know, who have been stuck at home. You know, I think as doctors, we've been able to go to work almost every day since what last May or June. Um, my wife's a professor, and she's been home for the last eighteen months, and it's just been very hard on a lot of people. Um, so I think, you know, I think that's a big big factor here. How many patients viewers said they put on the COVID-19 during COVID-19? COVID Freshman yeah. 15 and then the COVID-19. COVID-19. I mean, I'm like, <laughs> look, Duncan does a lot. He's like done Ironmans and stuff. Like, listen, you could have gone outside and run. You could have, you, you didn't, just it's because true. the gym was closed didn't mean you couldn't get any cardio. Yeah. We, every excuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back so I, think part, part of, I think part of what's going on is also, you know, I mean, for the past year, doing anything for yourself other than exercising, you know, I think there's been a certain amount of guilt, you know, people are constantly hearing about everybody who's sick, everybody who, you know, has somebody in their family who's died from COVID-19. And, and, you know, there was a certain amount of guilt to, you know, having your hair done or having your eyelashes done or something. I think people are just looking forward to be able to have a little bit of fun and, and do something for themselves. It's, it's a hopeful thing. And I, I think what's interesting is that it's not just the people the, meaning the people we're seeing now, it's not just those who used to do it, meaning Botox or hair or nails, it's a new bracket of people who I agree. otherwise, you know, the author of the article we're referring to said, I never thought I would be that person who would be vain enough to go seek out Botox treatment. And she said, I'm finding myself thinking about it all the time. Yeah. And it's not just because she's looking at herself on Zoom. There's, you know, there's a deeper psychosocial process going on that you know that they're going to be books written about this definitely they're going to be books written about this as psychiatrists and psychologists look back at this phenomenon and then once you get botox for the first time and you break that ice you do go back and get it again it's like yeah. crack it's like the drug dealers allergan that's why allergan gives away botox with your breast implants right yeah. they want that young demographic come here have a try a little botox you'll like it you'll like it boom done addict <laughs> yeah and, and you know, Jason, I, I would, I think that same applies to a lot of things, including you know some of the non-surgical things like, like Hero and Moxie and Forever Young and Forever Body. You know, people maybe didn't do it up until now, but they had the time and they had extra income and they did it. And I don't think it's going to stop. So I'm going to disagree with you a little bit that I think in 2022 you're going to be going, man. No, I I'm think still 20, really busy. I I think 22 is good. I think summer 22. People are going to be traveling because that'll be more traditional summer down. We're going traditional out, traditional and you're going to go out in your yacht in summer 22, right? Yeah. In, in Duncan's I'm yacht. I'm in. Yeah, right. We're going in Duncan's <laughs> yacht. Yeah. <laughs> That's great stuff, guys. You can see more of this on the Plastic Surgery Channel.com.